Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here from Rufio. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. Hopefully you enjoy the content that we're going to bring you. If this isn't your first time on the channel, maybe you've got a screw loose. You definitely shouldn't be back here. This fucking garbage content that you're wasting your goddamn time watching. But in either case, thank you very much for being here. The intention today is to give you a good idea of how Orcus works. Whether it's so that you can beat it a little bit easier or so you can learn to play it for yourself. It has been around for a little while now, but sometimes you just need to shake off a bit of that rust. Maybe you're new to the game. Uh, maybe you've just never had the chance to play the deck at all. In any case, hopefully this is going to offer you some food for thought. We have some combo tutorials that are going to be linked to this video as well as deck profiles courtesy of Yugi Joe, and I'm going to put those on there for you towards the end as well. There will be breakup of chapters along the bottom of this bar, so it can make things a little bit easier if you want to skip through all of the nonsense, including this part. So I'll stop fucking waffling and I'll get stuck right in to the crash course in August. August as an archetype debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in Soul Fusion at the tail end of 2018, a set which also saw a huge boost in support for Thunder Dragon. One of these decks initially only saw a small amount of hype, and the other saw huge representation, with relatively little success for the amount of experimentation that was taking place. August was the deck that took longer to get going. And while everyone was hyping up Thunder Dragons, August sat patiently waiting in the shadows until something would come along and push the deck to the level it was capable of reaching, which coincided with the release of Dingirsu. This period saw Orcus becoming one of the best decks in the modern game. Orcus went on to win and dominate a huge portion of events, and the deck's ability to be used as a small engine oversaw it being experimented with, giving it the chance to crush countless regionals, national championships, and even some YCS wins. So what is it that has made Orcus so popular, and how has it played? Let's start with something a little superficial, but a huge part of people loving Orcus as a deck is the lore. Orcus makes up a chunk of the world legacy stories as a whole, and quite easily we could take up a huge portion of this video discussing just this, but we'll stick with glossing over it. If you're interested in this being covered, there should be plenty of videos covering this in great detail. Of course, I can also bring you my own flavour of this, if requested. The deck's primary lines of play involve recycling cards, banishing them from the grave to allow others to take their place, such as Heart, which summons one from deck, Skeleton, which summons one from the grave, and the likes of Galatea who can shuffle back these banished cards so you can continue to have access to a large degree of resources. The deck has, in the past, had an uncanny ability to continue to grind and consistently end on small but impactful starting boards and combos, as well as being able to play quickly into link climbing into a position that allows them to swiftly deal with the opponent. This has been hindered somewhat, but once the deck establishes its presence, it can still be incredibly difficult to deal with. Because of the deck's popularity and dominance, we've seen it take a few hits on the list, so its consistency has been stumped a little, and primarily this has been the cause of it falling out of favour at the top end of the game. It's worth noting though that because it can be run as a small engine rather than as a pure deck, there's endless experimentation and indirect support that keeps the deck relevant at the regional level and the like. In this video we'll be covering specifically the cards that fall into the Orcus archetype and touch on what cards tend to be used in tandem with the deck. Next we're going to do a rundown of the Orcus cards and what they do and afterwards we'll take a look at some of the commonly played cards with the deck. As a quick note before we proceed, as with all of these videos, I won't be reading the text as it reads on the card for the most part. The intention here is to save time. I will however have a card on the screen for your perusal, but realistically, given that we're all Yu-Gi-Oh players, you won't be reading a fucking thing. We start off with Orcus Brass Bombard. You can banish it from the graveyard to special summon an Orcus monster from the hand, except for Bombard. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except for Dark Monsters. This effect is a hard one to turn. We have Orcus Symbol Skeleton. You can banish it from the graveyard to special summon an Orcus monster from the graveyard except for Skeleton. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except Dark Monsters. This effect is a hard one to turn. We also have Orcus Harp Horror. You can banish it from the graveyard to special summon an Orcus monster from the deck except for Harp. Also, you can't special summon for the rest of the turn except for Dark Monsters. This effect is a hard one to turn. 
Following that, we have Orcus Nightmare. It can't be destroyed by battle with a Link monster. You can banish it from the graveyard, then send a Dark Machine monster from your deck to the graveyard, except for Nightmare, and boost the attack of a monster on the field by that level times 100. Also, you can't special summon for the rest of the turn, except for Dark Monsters. This effect is a hard once per turn. And lastly, we have the most recent addition to the deck, Gearsu the Orcust Mech Knight. If it's summoned, you can send one Orcust or World Legacy card from the deck to the graveyard. Then, if there's two or more other cards in this card's column, it becomes a tuner during this turn. If you control no other monsters, you can special summon one World Legacy token to both fields in defense position. Each effect is a hard ones per turn. The numbers of each of these main deck monsters varies from deck to deck and format to format. However, Harp Horror is currently banned in the TCG. For this next part, we're going to be looking at the in-archetype extra deck options, which are few but potent. We start off with Dingirsu, the Orcus of the Evening Star, which requires two level 8 monsters. It can only be special summoned once per turn. You can also exceed summon it by using an Orcus Link monster you control as material. If a card or cards you control would be destroyed, you can detach a material from this card instead. If this card is special summoned, you can activate one of these effects. You can send one card your opponent controls to the graveyard, or you can attach one of your Banish Machines to this card as material. Following on from that, we have Galatea the Orcus Automaton. This requires two effect monsters, including an Orcus monster. This Link card can't be destroyed by battle. You can shuffle a Banish Machine monster into your deck, then you can set an Orcus spell or trap from your deck. This effect is a hard once per turn. Next we have Longearsu, the Orcus Orchestrator. This requires two plus effect monsters, including an Orcus monster. This link card can't be destroyed by card effects. You can shuffle two of your banished machine monsters into the deck, then you can send one linked monster your opponent controls to the graveyard. This card can't attack the turn that you activate this effect. This effect is a hard once per turn. And lastly we have Orcustrian. It requires two plus effect monsters, including an Orcus monster. This link card can't be destroyed. You can shuffle three of your Banish Machine monsters into your deck, and if you do, the attack and defense of any linked monsters your opponent controls become zero, and their effects are negated. This effect is a hard once per turn. Much like the main deck monsters, the quantities of these fluctuates from build to build, although Orcustrian sees by far the least representation. There are a good amount of spell and traps in Archetype, however few of these see significant play. I'll take the time to cover all of the available options for you. We start off with Orchestrated Return. Send one Orchest or World Legacy monster from your hand or field to the graveyard and then draw two cards. You can only activate Return once per turn. Next we have Orchestrated Babel. Orcus monsters in your graveyard or Orcus links on the field have their effects become quick effects. During your main phase, except the turn that it was sent to the graveyard, you can send a card from your hand to the graveyard to add this back to your hand. Following on from that, we have Orchestrated Einsatz. If your opponent summons a monster, you can banish or send to the graveyard one Orchest or World Legacy monster from your hand or deck. This effect is a hard once per turn. We have Orcus Crescendo. When a spell or trap card or monster effect is activated while you control an Orcus Link monster, negate and banish that card. You can banish this card from the graveyard to add a Dark Machine monster that is in your deck or is banished to your hand. You can't special summon monsters the turn you activate this card except for Dark Machines. You can only use one copy of Orcus Crescendo per turn. We also have Orchestrated Core. Once per turn you can banish a monster from your field or graveyard, then target an Orcus or World Legacy card you control except for Core. Neither player can target it with effects this turn even if it leaves the field. If another Orcus or World Legacy card or cards would be destroyed, you can send this to the graveyard instead. We have Orchestrated Attack. When a monster declares an attack, you can tribute an Orcus or World Legacy monster to banish an opponent's monster. And lastly, we have Orchestrated Release. You can tribute two machine monsters, then special summon a monster from your graveyard. If your opponent controls a Link monster, you can special summon two monsters instead. You can only activate one release per turn. Most of these cards don't really see much play. The most commonly played is Return, which is normally a single copy, potentially two, and a single copy of Babel. You'll also see, most likely, a single copy of Crescendo. 
August is an interesting one in that for quite some time it became just an engine for so many other decks. So technically the list of external support could be insanely long. Instead I'm going to focus on covering the main cards that are seen across the majority of August centric decks. World Legacy, World Wand. This is pretty much considered to be part of the Orcus package itself, but given that it does not fall directly under them, I have listed it as external support. As to why there is synergy, I believe that this is pretty self-explanatory, and in fact, you'll not see very many builds without this in the deck. Following on from that, we have the Scrap Engine. In recent formats, this has been one of the more powerful inclusions into the deck, providing insane advantage effectively off a single normal summon, which also is great at going first or even second. Uninterrupted, you can end on a Link 4 and set up your full Orcus follow-up just off a Scrap Recycler or summon, plus one card to pop on the field. We also have the Dangers. These ones once again seem a little self-explanatory. Dark monsters that dig you deeper, potentially dumping resources into your grave in the process, which in this deck of course, is insane. We also have Gizmek Orochi, the Serpentron Sky Slasher, another one of these cards that just feels like it should have had Orcus in the name. It's an absolutely amazing card in this deck, it can keep you in games, it can win them, and it's incredibly easy to set up and put yourself in a position to either keep yourself in the game, or to keep the pressure up on the opponent. And lastly of note we have the Dark Warriors. We see the two Brothers of Darkness rocking up here, there, and everywhere, and August is no exception for this. Armageddon Knight and Dark Rev are, in particular, of two of the best options you can have to get your play started, and they slot in here perfectly. For the next part, we're going to be looking at some sample lists. We've got an Orcus Combo Test list, an Orcus Synchron list, Mech Knight Orcus list, and Competitive Orcus list. These have all been provided by Yugi Cho. If you haven't already, you should definitely go ahead and check him out and go and hit subscribe. I'll have a link for him down in the description, probably pinned to the top of the comments, and I'll likely have some links on screen. He's also been awesome enough to allow me to link over to his combo guides, his ultimate combo guides, I might add. One for Mech Knight Orcus, and one is the ultimate Orcus combo guide. Those links will also be available to you if you want to dig a little bit deeper into this one.
So hopefully following all of that, you've got some good food for thought. You now know how to pilot Orcus, whether it's to play with the deck or even how to smash it to fucking smithereens. That's the intention of this video, and hopefully that's what you're walking away with. There is plenty of other content out there that will help you with learning this deck. It's actually pretty good once you've got your kind of your head around the combos and what sort of lines of play to take, which really just comes mostly with practice. But hopefully you'll get the idea of how it's all, and hopefully you see some real benefits after this video. Thanks again for checking in, guys. If you haven't already, you should most definitely hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe, and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in, and I'll see you in the next one.